Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here behind me, you see the statue of Queen Anne, but as it in Latin, Regina as in Queen. And this is the only statue of her in London. So she reigned from 1701 to uh, 1714. And uh, she was, well, the daughter of King Charles II, the uh, elder daughter of King Charles II. Uh, what am I talking about? Sorry, James II, Charles II's her uncle. So uh, she's part of the Stuart uh, dynasty and um, uh, she was brought up uh, in the Anglican faith. However, her father later converted to the Roman Catholic Church, which was to be crucial. Um, she was, sorry, she, what am I saying? She's the younger daughter of James II. So Mary was her elder sister. And um, anyway, uh, Anne, she married Prince George of Denmark and she lived here in the United Kingdom, mostly in Kensington Palace. But um, in November 1688, on the 5th of that month, to be precise, uh, her brother-in-law, William, the Stadtholder of the Netherlands, landed at Torbay, having come over from the Netherlands. And so William of Orange, as he was also known, was married to Anne's elder sister, Mary. So William and Mary overthrew Anne and Mary's father, James II. There was uh, one brief battle um, at Newbury, and that was that. Most of uh, James II's army went over to the other side because um, uh, James II had one, uh, sorry, had these two daughters uh, with his uh, first wife, Anne Hyde, the daughter of um, Edward Hyde, the Earl of Clarendon. She died. Then James II married again, Mary of Modena, the daughter of an Italian duke, Roman Catholic, of course. And uh, that summer of 1688, Mary of Modena had been delivered of a bonny baby boy. So James II was a Catholic ruling a mostly Protestant people. Could this situation last? Well, some people found it intolerable. Remember, almost everybody in uh, England, Wales, and Scotland was a Protestant. Um, in Ireland, most of us were Catholics. There was a Protestant minority, mainly in Dublin, or the eastern half of Ulster. Um, and there was a lot of sectarian animus at the time. James II was very ahead of his time, saying though he was a, a Roman Catholic, he would not impose Catholicism uh, in Great Britain. Um, and he uh, had the Act of Indulgence, the Act of Toleration passed, saying that Catholics would not be discriminated in, against in England, Wales, in Scotland, Episcopalians would not be discriminated against. Episcopalian Church is the uh, theological bedfellow of the, the Anglican Church, but in Scotland. Because in Scotland, the, the established church was the Church of Scotland, as it was Presbyterian, it had no bishops, it's more strongly Protestant than the Church of England. Anyway, some people suspected that James II was uh, simply lying, and that's politics, and as soon as, as he could, he would bring back Catholicism and force it on people. And in fact, they were right. There was the Secret Treaty of Dover, where Louis XIV, this King of France, Roman Catholic, of course, had uh, promised um, James II money, because Parliament wasn't voting in money, Parliament controlled tax, uh, and that James II was to bring back Catholicism as the state religion as soon as the security of his crown allowed. Uh, but anyway, there was the Immortal Seven. Seven leading politicians or bishops uh, sent uh, a letter. Ooh, I can see Ed Arger, the Conservative MP over there. A real Tory boy. Um, anyway, the, the Immortal Seven, they sent a letter, the invitation to William uh, in that summer of, of 1688, saying he must come and uh, investigate the circumstances of the birth of this infant, as in James II's son. Was he really James II's son? Was the child superstitious, smuggled in in a warming pan? It was a changeling, so they said. They didn't want to accept that this Catholic king had a, had a son. But anyway, James II fled. Don't want to go too much into him. 1688, bit of fighting. Uh, then 1690, the Battle of the Boyd in Ireland. And that was that. James II fled to France, lived out the rest of his life there. So um, when, uh, William of Orange ruled with his wife, Mary, as in sister of this one, elder sister of this one. But um, Mary died a few years later, childless, and William died in 1701. So therefore, Queen Anne, she became the sovereign queen because she was an Anglican. She had obviously Roman Catholic relatives. Well, her baby nephew, sorry, half-brother, what am I talking about? Her baby, and obviously various other Catholic cousins. But they weren't to be considered because the um, Act of Settlement had been passed and only a Roman Catholic could ascend the throne or, in, sorry, no Roman Catholic could ascend the throne uh, or indeed be married to the monarch. So that was that. So uh, she went through 17 pregnancies, had lots of miscarriages, stillbirths, and gave birth to several live babies, but none of them lived beyond the age of 10. She had one son who lived quite old, but um, 
uh, he was uh, mentally deficient. So some people say the country was blessed in the fact that the Almighty called this boy to his reward. So she was told that uh, for uh, her nutrition, to maintain fertility, she must eat and eat and eat. So she became uh, very grossly obese. Grotesque! But uh, her, her husband, Prince George of Denmark, nevertheless did his duty. And Denmark Hill in South London is named after him. And um, it's Jeremiah Clark, the organist of St Paul's, composed the Prince of Denmark, Denmark's March, that trumpet voluntary. Dun 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 Most memorably played at the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer in 1981. Um, anyway, so back to Queen Anne. So under her, there was the War of Spanish Succession. Um, it all happened when Ferdinand, the Electoral Prince of Bavaria, died, and he was due to become the next King of Spain. But with him out of the way, who was going to be the next King of Spain? Well, it was someone who was due to be King of Spain and King of France. Now, the United Kingdom, well, founded only in 1707, this is before the United Kingdom existed, just England, Scotland, and indeed Ireland. We couldn't possibly tolerate France and Spain being united under the same man, so there's a war to prevent that happening. Obviously, unacceptable. Who's King of France and Spain is up to them. This country doesn't get to decide. So there was that war, and there were many anti-French allies because France was the mightiest country in Europe at the time, and English policy, later we said British policy, was to oppose the most puissant state in Europe to prevent it becoming overmighty. Obviously, in time, the United Kingdom became the power, most powerful state in Western Europe, so it was a bit hypocritical. And so various minor German states, the Netherlands, Sweden, and so on, were leagued together in this war against France um, and indeed Spain ultimately successful. So that was that. So there was some peace and tranquility after the upheaval of the Williamite Wars. Uh, and then she died in 1714. That is Queen Anne. Um, that's Queen Anne architecture. And this is Queen Anne's gate, because this street, it really um, is a fabulous example of, of the architecture of her era. Now, you can see the bees on her dress denoting industry. And you can see she's holding that orb to represent in one hand, the hand nearer me represent all the people with the cross at the top. She's holding a scepter over here, as in of regal power, or should I say renal power in her case. You see how her hair is done. So that is Queen Anne. There's only one other statue of her, that's at Queen Anne's, so that's at the Queen's College, Oxford. Uh, notice it should be called the Queen's College, not simply Queen's College, and she's supposed to be pregnant in that one. The only statue of a pregnant woman I know of in this realm. Anyway, that is Queen Anne, a monarch who ought to be better known.